Okay, this is a quick tutorial using a bit of software called ScreenPresso. Um, I find it quite useful for uh, even in lessons when I make, um, I'm talking with kids about exam questions, I put the exam question on the board, work my way through it using the graphic tablet and uh, my usual whiteboard software. And it allows me to record the video of what's happening on the screen. Optionally, you can even have a section where it will show you what's happening on the webcam as well, and you can put that in the corner. I don't like seeing myself on there, so I avoid it. Um, but it's a nice piece of software, quite quick, cheap, free, and it has a number of nice features, which I'll try and show you quite quickly now. Uh, the website to go to is the website screenpresso.com, and that will actually bring you to this home page. When you download it, um, it is for Windows, so I, uh, I don't remember what I was trying to use on a Mac. But uh, for Windows, this works quite nicely. And if you notice, the download button is for a portable application. The portable application means you can put it on a flash drive and run it on pretty much any computer. That's how I use it in school. I actually run it off a, a flash drive. Uh, the downside with the portable version is it must always be up to date. So if it detects that there's a new version, you get prompted to download the, the latest version. Um, when you click on the page, it will ask you for your email address and confirm. And it will download, and it's about 11 megabytes at the moment. So I've just downloaded the executable. I haven't got it installed at the moment on the computer, you can see. Although I am recording using this software. Uh, the screen presser, uh, I'm going to open it from where it is in the folder. I hope there's not too much other stuff in here. No, it doesn't look like it. So I, I tend to copy that and put it somewhere in a work folder, so documents. And I'll create a maths folder for it. Or lessons, or just somewhere for me to know where it is. I don't tend to leave it in download. So copy and downloads. Move that file into my maths folder. Now, when I run Screen Presser, what it will do is it will pop up a window offering me the option to install or run it in portable mode. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I've trusted it, I've had it files checked for over about five years now. I think it's four or five years I've been using it. Um, and here's the welcome screen. Uh, it's all the like, usual license things. Um, you click to say I accept the license. If you have admin rights, you can install it. If you don't, you can run it without installing, and that's the method I'm going to show you. So from that point onwards, what I have is screen press 03. Um, you might get error messages on school laptops that are trying to write things to a registry key. Uh, you could ignore them. It just means some of the settings may not get saved, uh, although I think it does seem to try to keep a copy that you can use. It, it keeps the same settings when I'm using it in school. A uh, couple of quick things. It's actually designed to be a screenshot viewer, but I use it mainly for recording videos, and I've got a choice of modes. Record the, either the whole screen or particular regions that you can either select by window or by actually creating your own rectangle. Let's do a couple of things that I normally do for setup first. First thing in the setup, uh, go to your settings. Uh, you might want to change where your working folder is. Um, keep a, Decide whether or not you want it to start with Windows. I tend to let it start with Windows. It doesn't take up any space and let, when even when you're using it. It seems to be not affect anything. Um, I'm not worried about anything in screenshots, but this is the format. If you just want to take screenshots as you work your way through. Sharing is the nice one. This is one of the main reasons I really like it. And with that, I, you can actually share to a YouTube account. So you've got to register. You go to grant access to your YouTube account. Uh, now I'm going to find out whether or not we can do it through the school email address today. Use another account. And I'll type in the school address. Okay, and 
do next. Use your school logins. Uh, so this is a, a problem with my internet at home. Just refresh it. There we go. Uh, it's because I've got to use uh, a 4G network, so I'm not on the wire. Um, uh, sign in as normal. And password. Now we come in, it redirects, but if that's me, yep. Um, screen for so wants to have access to this account, it can manage my YouTube videos and I'm going to allow it to do that. And hopefully when this loads up, oh, why is it doing that local host stuff? This is looking a little shaky at the moment. Let's see what's happened to the Presso install. Account name, Paul Boothroyd. Yeah, and I can say OK. So now I've got the option of uploading my videos to YouTube. Uh, that's the first one. Let's go through and look at some other settings because the, the settings have been closed out. Uh, so that was the sharing section. I'm now able to share directly to my YouTube video. Video capture. Um, you can put various bits into here to about choosing the date. And I'm going to just make sure mine go in sequence so I can remember what I was doing on which day. So this is lessons underscore. And if we do one for a date, and the format is going to be year, 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 month, month, day, day. And I'm going to put a sequence number on it as well. Zero. And I think I'll have to place the digit. Uh, you'll see what that comes out with a bit later, but it will show. Today's date, sequence number one file, just so I know what's going on. Um, and the moment I'll tell you about the workspaces. Uh, I'll turn on direct recording to MP4. It will, the first time, ask you to download a, another bit of software. It's the encoder for MP4. Um, do use it because it makes accessible on YouTube a lot better. If you don't use that, it saves an AVI file format. Um, MacBooks don't always show YouTube videos which were originally uploaded with AVI. Uh, quickly through the other notes, uh, the things. Uh, display preview after the recording is stopped. That just means that when you finish recording something, it will start playing it to you. Yes or no, I tend to let it do it. It can be annoying during lessons when you've just finished doing the question, say, well, I'm going to upload it, and it will just start playing. Uh, ask it to record the microphone. I'm also going to turn on record sounds. Ah, yeah, it's not a feature you can use in the free version. Highlight mouse cursor, so that should actually make the cursor appear a lot brighter and show when it's clicking. Um, I wouldn't display the watermark, but turning on the display counter means just before you start making a video, it goes 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and you need to choose which video source. Now, because of the way I've set this computer up, it isn't showing uh, what I have, because um, I'm actually connecting from one computer to another to record this. Uh, on my normal setup, it actually has detected quite happily for both of these my webcam. Uh, I've got a fairly cheap Logitech. And this is what I'm recording all of this with. Um, I don't think I need to check anything else in there. Uh, but because this is on a, a remote computer that has nothing plugged into it, it can't record those bits. 
Uh, you can change the threading generally. I find it's what it records as default is fine. Hotkeys allows you to change which keys you're going to use. Uh, so by standard, to record a video, you use control and print screen. Uh, not pe many people are familiar with print screen. It's up near the uh, top right near your keypad. If you use control and alt print screen normally, you can do just static screenshots of the script thing. Um, use it quite a lot with students to get evidence for their work. And you can, there's also another one, and you can choose what these are uh, just by clicking on modify and change which keys they are. So that's the basic settings I've put in. Um, and to actually make it record a video, which could be entertaining with this, um, what I often do, oh, and little note, by default it will actually start a little, what's called a hot area at the top. So in screenshot region and video. Uh, screen password winning minimize, use print screen to form a capture. Uh, we're going to want to create a, a, a proper one. If I open up OneNote, this is what I actually use for the teaching. I actually use OneNote. Uh, the 2016 version, which isn't on the school laptops, is actually quite nice because you can make a dark scene, which for videos is often quite a lot nicer. Um, so if I wanted to create a quick video, what I would do is either go to the hotkeys at the top and record a video using control print screen. Let's see if it will actually capture anything. Nothing detected, but it will still capture some movies. So I can move this box around to say which region I want to talk to and talk about, change the size by default, say what, and start recording bits and pieces as I go through. I promise if you set the video it up properly, it will record the videos as you go through. Uh, so let's just record a quick video of me messing around. So I'll go and press print screen to stop the recording. And it's doing a quick countdown. Four, three, two, one. And I can come in and run some other programs that I might want to run. So I'll run a Python session. Bring it into the area that I've told it to record. Remember the dotted line is where it's recording. So if I'm doing some code with some kids, I can actually get it to do print. Hello world. Press enter and it will run the command. I record that. So now I want to finish it recording. I'll press uh, the print screen button.